Amen. Glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Joshua chapter 5. We're going to begin and look at verse 12. Joshua 5 verse 12. It says, And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna any more, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. Amen. And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna any more, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. Amen. What I want to share with you this morning is the corn of Canaan. Amen. The corn of Canaan. We see here in this passage as we look at this, the manna stopped after they ate of the old corn of the land. Amen. Father, we come to you. We thank you for your word. We are in desperate need of your help this morning. And I pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit. Father, may you give me the words to preach. Touch the hearts to receive. Father, I ask that every power of darkness, every hindering spirit in the name of Jesus be bound it is not welcome in this place, and we pray that your word will go forth to penetrate our hearts and that the sowing of your seed would bring forth a great harvest. And we love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The corn of Canaan. In this passage of Scripture, we can, and you are welcome, and I encourage you to go home and read the full chapter. But we see that Joshua has taken over. Moses is now dead. Moses has undauntedly led the children of Israel through 40 years of wilderness. And through that entire time, the Bible says that God provided manna, which was angels' food, for them to eat. There was no food in the wilderness. There was no place for them to be able to go. There was no water. In fact, the Bible said that there was a rock that followed them. That rock symbolized Jesus. As we look at the wilderness, you see absolute amazing miracles take place that God provided for the people of Israel. Even when they were going out and they would every morning pick up manna from the ground. In fact, the Bible would say that the dew would come and that when the dew would then leave in the morning, what was left was manna. And they would go out and they would scoop up dishes, but they could only take that which they could eat that day. The reason God ordered that was because every day we are to partake of Jesus Christ. Every day we are to be partaking of him. They were not allowed to take more than what they could take that day. Meaning, if they thought, I'll take enough today and I'll eat the extra tomorrow, when they did that, they found that there was worms in that manna. The food had instantly become corrupt. Because God would make us and have us to be dependent upon him daily. Yes. We are in daily need of his help. They needed water and they, a literal rock followed them for 40 years in the wilderness to water this great caravan of people and animals. That, that rock, the Bible would say, was a type of Christ that fed them and watered them and gave them their every need. He follows us. He will be our guide wherever we go. Amen? If we will trust it to him. But it says that Moses had died. The land of Canaan was now ahead of them and they crossed the Jordan. God parted the Jordan just as he parted the Red Sea. And they crossed over into this new land. The Bible would tell us that for 40 years them eating angels' food, they, it wasn't long after they began to eat it that they began to murmur. They began to complain. Tired of the same food. Tired of this, of this thing. I don't have to cook it. I don't have to buy it. 
every single day it's out there, but yet still it's not good enough. I'm tired of it. And they murmured and complained about it. And for 40 years this happened until every single one that had been brought out of Egypt was dead. Not a single soul that came out of Egypt was able to be alive when they went into the, land, the promised land. This is significant for us. When we think of all of the, the, the Israelites coming out of Egypt under great power and thrust of God, yet not a single one of them saw the promised land because of unbelief. They murmured and they doubted and they complained. And now that all of them had died, their children were born in the wilderness. Now all of those people are about to cross over into the promised land with Joshua as their leader. And it says, if we can go ahead and look up in verse 10, the children of Israel en en encamped in Gilgal, and they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month, uh, even in the plains of Jericho. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn in the selfsame day. <laughs> And the manna ceased on the morrow after. For they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna anymore, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. We see here that when God led them out of the wilderness, he brought them into the promised land. After they partook in the Passover, which was what Jesus had to do, the Passover lamb. This was the first Passover that they partook in having entered into the promised land. The lamb was slain. The blood was shed. And when this was happened instantly, this is after they were done eating the Passover, partaking of what he had done. We just took communion. That was a reminder of us partaking of Christ, partaking in his flesh, in his blood that was shed. The Bible would say that Jesus looked at all the people and he said, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no part of me. And the Bible says that many left him that day and quit following him because this word seemed so strange and weird to them because they didn't have a, an ear to hear what God was saying. He's not meaning literally a partaking of eating or a literal partaking of drinking, but he's meaning every day just as the manna was given, we must partake of him. We are dependent upon God. As we enter into this new year, and I praise God for what he did, this, did for us in this past year. I thank God for what he's brought us through. I thank God for what he taught us. I thank God for what he has done in our individual lives to grow, draw us closer to him. And let it be known, if we're not drawing closer to him, then we are drawing away from him. There's no, there's no stand still with God. We're either moving forward or we're moving backwards away from him. And I pray that every one of us was drawing closer to God. And as we look at this, as they were entering into a new land, a new year, the old was gone, and God now gave them the, the fruit of the land to partake in. This pertains to the word of God. It is a sy symbolic of God's word. And this is the message that I want to tell you this morning. Many people choose what they want to do. They choose the path they want to go. And they ask God to bless it. And as a believer, that cannot be our heart. We ask God what he wants us to do, and we follow him, and he will automatically bless it. Amen? We don't follow our own heart. We don't follow our own path, and then ask God, please make this be a fruitful thing. Because in, instead, all that that will bring about with us is the idea that I'm following my own will. And the Bible teaches that our will must be engulfed in His will. Amen? Amen. The manna stopped the day after they ate the Passover. When you and I become born again and we've partaken of Christ Jesus, we've been crucified with Christ, we are no longer the old man, but we are a new man by faith in what He did for us at Calvary. The old way is now gone, and now he promises, I will give you the fruit of the land. I will now nourish you with the fruit of my word. And his word must be our map. It must be our guide. 
And whatever you go through this year, if you want it to be honorable, if you want it to be blessed, if you want God to be in it, then you must follow His Word. We must follow His heart. Not my heart, but His heart. Where does He want me to go? Where does He want me to stay? What does He want me to say? My heart needs to be engulfed in His heart. My ear to His heart. That when He instigates the Word, I'm there to obey it. It says that the, the, the same day after they partook of the Passover, God stopped the manna. And from that day forward, they ate of the fruit, the corn of Canaan. They ate of the fruit that the promised land produced. Well, this is what I want to lay upon your heart, and I won't keep you much longer this morning, but this is what I want to lay upon your heart. If we think that now everything is safe and sound and good and glorious, if we would continue to read on, the very next step is there is a giant city that is impenetrable called Jericho. Right after this glorious thing happens, after God leads them out, brings them into the promised land, cuts off the old nourishment and starts to give them new nourishment in Christ Jesus. Now all of a sudden there's a wall that's impenetrable called Jericho. And how in the world would they get past these men? This great wall, this great city that stands in their way. And the Bible would tell us that Joshua went out and he sought the Lord. He saw a man standing off with a drawn sword. And Joshua, being a man of war, said to him, Are you for us or against us? And the man said, I am come as the God of hosts. And the Bible would teach us and show us that this was not just an angel, but it was a pre-incarnate person of Jesus Christ. If we think that the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that all of that only was fulfilled in the New Testament, we're mistaken. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit were active even in the Old Testament. And, the, and, the, and God the Son was revealed here in this. And the Bible says that Joshua fell on his face and worshipped. And we know that this was Jesus before he was born of this flesh. Because two things. Number one, angels have always refused worship. Whenever in the Bible anyone has ever bowed down and given worship to an angel... The angel has always rebuked them and said, get up off the ground. I am not to be worshipped. But this, this man did not do this. And second, he said, take off your shoes, Joshua, because where you stand is holy ground. The same words that God Almighty told Moses in the burning bush. We know that this was Jesus Christ before he became flesh and put on flesh because God has always been. And when he does this, Joshua falls and worships. And God Almighty, through His Son, gives Joshua the, the plan. And He tells Joshua what to do. And He says, take your, take your, the Ark of the Covenant, and take your priests and the people, and I want you to march around the walls of Jericho every single day for seven days. This sounds so foolish. And then on the seventh day, He says, I want you to march seven times, and after you've done it seven times, you blow the horn and you shout the victory and you holler it out as loud as you can. And Jesus told Joshua, and when this happens, the walls will come down. Now here we are, we're faced with this, this new land. And the Bible says that they sent spies and they were turned and said there's giants in the land. But God said, if God be for us, who can be against us? I don't know what you're going to face this coming year. There may be giants. There may be a wall of Jericho, but if you'll feast on the corn of, of, of Canaan, if you'll partake of God's word and allow him to be your guide today, and if you'll allow him to guide you this year and the year after and forever and ever, you will not face a battle that you cannot win. Right. Every wall will fall down. Yes. Hallelujah. Every giant will fall yes. and be slain. And that would go on to say that when they shouted, you can imagine the silliness of it. See, everything requires faith. Because shouting doesn't actually bring down walls. Walking around something doesn't actually make it fall. It's not scientifically possible. 
And the world would say you were a fool, which the world also believes we came from monkeys. So what do they know? Amen? Amen. Amen. If, 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 if we say all this and say, well, you actually believe all that happened? Isn't that somewhat childish Sunday school stuff? No. It requires more faith to believe that I was evolved from a monkey and that this beautiful earth come from some big explosion that took place and that some slime ball evolved into this beautiful world. It takes more, more faith to believe that than it does to believe that God Almighty spoke it into existence. Oh, yes. Amen? Amen? The oldest book in the entirety of the world declares the, the beginning of time and creation. Why would it, why would it, re, why would it be, require more faith? I believe it. Bible says it. I believe it. That's all there is to it. Amen? If you don't believe it, and if, if you want to believe we come from a monkey, which I've said this before, I went to the zoo once, and I watched this gorilla sitting there in front of a, of a, of a glass. And he spit on that glass. He watched his spit drip all the way down the glass. And he'd take his nasty tongue and slurp it all back up again. And spit again and watch it. For hours that gorilla stood there and watched his spit drip down a glass wall. And if you want to believe that that was your granddaddy, then you go right on ahead. But I know that that gorilla ain't my granddaddy. Amen. I was bought with the price. I was formed by creation. God built me and formed me and breathed breath and life into me. And I am a living creation of God. I didn't come from some blob on the, and some tissue. I came because God spoke me into existence. Praise the Lord. Amen. There's more to us. Life is more precious than that. That's why abortion is such an abomination to God. Even in the womb, it's a living, it's a living life. And if, one, if someone wants to say, which years ago, this is how far we have declined. Years ago, before they had technology, they tried to pass it off as a blob of tissue. And before they had ultrasounds, no one could prove otherwise. But now through technology, you can see a heartbeat within weeks, and that, maybe even more than sooner than that. You can begin to see little fingers grow and, and pr be produced. Never seen ultrasounds of my, they even have a 3D ultrasound now that you can see three dimensional of that baby in the womb. The world doesn't, can't even de declare it as a glob anymore because you can literally see its life. But yet we are still aborting them by a million babies a year in America. And yet we call it not murder. But yet, in the instant that child is born and breathes life, if it's killed then, then it's, it's murder. But if you just hold on a minute later and kill it in the womb, it's not murder. That's sick. Yes. And that's the deception of the world today that we no longer see it that way. And we're still aborting little innocent babies. And I'm not, that's another sermon in itself. But what I want to tell you this morning and in closing... This year, God has great things planned for us if we're walking by faith. We hear all of these things, and I've heard people say over and over again, our best days are ahead of us. And I've said before, that is a lie unless Jesus Christ is risen in our heart and, and our, the Savior of our, of our life. Unless that has taken place, we can't be promised better days ahead. Even if... And when I say that, even if it brings trials and tribulations, I can still say better days are ahead because I have confidence and faith that He's going to bring me through it. Amen? Amen? There's no battle, there's no wall, there's no giant in the land that can defeat me because Jesus Christ is on my side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you put His Word as your guide and you place your faith solely in Him and what He did at the cross of Calvary, you will see victory. You will see the giants slain right. and, the, and the walls fall. Yes. And there's, there's no amount of glory. There's no amount of words to describe the blessings that will come into our heart and life if we put Jesus first. Yes. Amen? Yes. No amount of blessing that can, or a word to describe the blessing. Yes. But at the same time, let, let there be a, a warning to that also. If we do things our own way, 
if we go our own route. If we tell God, I don't like the taste of the man. I don't like the way you're doing things. I like it my own way. Hebrews chapter 3 would tell us that we will die and our carcass will fall in the wilderness. And that sounds a little rough, but it's the truth. Every one of them people, who, and don't, don't think that the miracles of yesterday are going to sustain you today. Because if there's any lesson to be learned in, in the wilderness, every one of them saw the ten plagues brought about upon Egypt. They saw the splitting of the Red Sea. They saw a rock follow them wherever they went. They saw manna every single day of their life. Which, praise God, if I could see about one of those, I'd be rejoicing. Amen? So would you. If I got to literally watch a, a rock follow me wherever I went, and it's producing water in the desert, and every morning I woke up, I didn't have to cook my own food, but God laid out a, a, an array of food before me. And all I had to do was reach down and scoop it up and eat it. Angel's food. That's a miracle. Praise God, that'd be cool. Yeah. But yet even in that, they doubted. And they complained and they murmured. So don't think that the miracles that we saw yesterday are going to see us through to the promised land. Because it takes faith today. Yes. Every single day that we wake up is a new day that we have to believe by faith in Christ Jesus. Yes. Every day we go out and we scoop up the food from heaven. Oh, yes. And we put his word before us. And we walk and live by his spirit. Yes. Amen? Every Amen. single day Amen. by faith. Amen. So don't yes. think that because God did some great thing with us last year, it's going to be great this year. It can be. Every single day we have to choose. I'm going to wake up and I'm going to partake of Christ. I'm going to partake of his word. I'm going to put him first. Amen. Amen. And what I what I mean by that, I don't just mean a ritual of study, and that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about every single day we waking up and our faith is resting in what He did for us at the cross. Because anything other than that, we will find ourselves struggling. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You bow your heart. Father, I thank you.